So let's do some more experiments with this Pico W, the Wi-Fi enabled high Pico. I've soldered some header strips on this. I mean, you don't really need to see that because I've done this loads of times. I suppose I've never done it on a high Pico W before. So, OK, here you go. Well, that was exciting viewing, wasn't it? I've connected this now to the board. I've flashed the uh, UF2 file on it. So in the last video, I just connected to the Wi-Fi access point and connected to a external web service. And I just brought back a text object that was a response from the web server. So that's not really that exciting, apart from it proves it does connect to my local access point. So I've been looking at at this here so this is actually putting a web server on the pico so i've copied this code here and i've just pasted that into funny so again this is the same as last time i've got my wi-fi and my password up at the top of the file here so as not to share it but that's the only difference from the demo code in the pdf so the first thing i should do is connect to my pico so there he is um, connected there this is still the original uf2 file so let's just run it and see whether that works okay connecting to network looks like it waits for a bit to connect there it's got my ip and now it's doing a heartbeat which is the onboard led flashing as you can see there so it's given me the IP address. So let's take that IP and put it into a web browser. All right. So there it is running in a web browser. And as you see, when I refresh the web browser, um, you get some information there on the screen. And that's I mean, it's not doing anything with the LED at the moment uh, because we haven't put the LED on. This is just the heartbeat LED. So let's have a look at this code and see what it's doing. Well, first of all, it defines the pin for the LEDs there. There's two pins. I think there's the onboard LED, which is what the heartbeat's doing. And there's an external LED, which I've put one here, a green one. But um, that's not at the moment going to do anything because it's not wired up. I set the SID and password. Here's an example text document. So, I mean, this should be easy. That says Pico W here. So let's just change this to spider math Pico W. If I stop that and rerun it and refresh this. OK, so there's the, the basic web page. So that's easy. We can see what that's doing. But uh, it's also got this little percent string in there. And that's the like the little merge field for it. So I think the software later on will put something into that field, although we're not seeing it at the moment. Then there's a connect to network. So that's what we were seeing. So the first thing it must run is connect to network. And then it waits for 10 seconds, maybe. Keeps on checking, printing wait for connection and finally gives the IP address when it is connected. So we saw that down the bottom of the screen. So the second bit is the serve client. So this must be the web server. This must be what happens when an external web browser connects to the Pico. So first of all, it says client connected. Let's just have a look at that and see see what that means it says so first of all that's the request so it's a get http and then it disconnects so that's looking at request headers that we don't care about at the moment it's where we could put some credentials i suppose and then it reads the request and it looks to see whether light on or light off is in the url as i read that and then it prints on the bottom whether the led is on or the led is off they're both minus ones at the moment and here it says if led on equals six then print led on if led off equals six then led is off okay so not really sure what's going on there um, but it's looking to see whether this value is six for some reason i don't know why that is set to six and then here's the interesting bit. So this is setting the state is to on or off, led on or on off. That's a string again. And then this bit, this takes the HTML document we defined earlier and then it puts state is into the place where we had that little merge field back there. 
and then it sends sends the information back and sends that to the client so reading that then if we now go light on led is on so that's put that led is on string back to the web browser and led is off now obviously this web browser could be anywhere on my network i've got it on the same machine it's not that um, this web browser is talking through this wire to the Pico. It's actually talking over the Wi-Fi to it. And then it, it closes and disconnects it. So here's the asynchronous main. So this is what it runs when we start up. It connects to the network, runs that that we looked at to begin with. And then it runs the web server. And it should, because it's asynchronous, it should run that web server whenever there's a connection. So it won't, you could send several connections at once if you wanted to. All right, so let's have a look at the connecting an LED to this now. So I've got my LED in the board there. And on the documentation, um, there was a standard server first. And in front of that, we had um, the wiring. So just looking at that wiring, it takes the third pin down, which is ground. So let's put a ground pin in there, one, two, three. And then it talks about GP15, which it looks like is the very last one there. I'm going to, I'm going to put this as red, not that it matters about it being red or not. Um, they use a blue in the picture. And let's take the, well, let's take that to one side of the, LED and this will go to the other side of the LED but because it's an LED corrected directly, connected directly I've just got a little resistor here can't remember what this is I think it was 220 220 ohm um, so let's just pop that in and see whether anything happens oh well, can you see that it's uh, lighting up that's weird cool this resistor it, this um just me even me is enough enough power from me must be an earth leak somewhere to light that led up well let's connect it directly to the wire and nothing's happening but why is nothing happening well i don't, we don't know what state the the led is in at the moment it still seems to think that the led is on so let's just try that again right so i could well have connected this the wrong way around so let's try again let's bring that to there and pop that this side there we go all right oh that's too bright well you can definitely see it's on isn't it so there's a green light green led so hopefully now if we go back to the machine and change this to led light equals off there we go so that turns the light off so let's try and extend this now so you see i've put a couple of red leds in and another green one and what I want to do is set up some traffic lights. So you've got a direction of traffic coming this way and a direction of traffic coming this way. Again, and just check that the green is still working. OK, there you go. There's the heartbeat working. And let's try and turn the LED on. Just refresh that. All right, so that's got the green working. So, of course, if you've got traffic coming this way, um, the traffic this going this way has got to stop, hasn't it? So... The easiest thing to do is actually is to wire up uh, this red over this side um, to uh, be on when the green is on. So that should be really simple. What I've done, uh, what I've changed previous from previous is that I've just um, put the ground there going to this side rail. And then it should be quite easy for me to wire up some other things. So let's take um, a ground and put another resistor in and take that from um, there to the red so that's gone to the negative of that led and then i should be able to take um, this signal here that's going to the green led so i'll take that as red as well bring him around there and put him into here so that now is very simply that you've got a red light showing that way and a green light showing that way now obviously if i turn this off so let's go back to the machine and turn that off um both go off it doesn't swap 
So let's modify the code now to add an extra LED in. So if we go and look at the code to begin with, up here I've got pin 15 called LED and that's pin out. So I'm going to change LED to let's change it to change it to right go. So right go from there. And then I'll take the previous pin, pin 14, and I'll change that to left go. We'll call this pin 14, which should be the next one down. And I'll change it to left go. So if we go back down to where the light's turned on, this bit where I'm talking to LED, I've changed that now. So what did I call it again? I've already forgotten. So right go. So let's just change that LED there and right go. So if I run that, hopefully it will still work and this go should still be there so let's go forward right okay so right go is still working so if we just go down to this bit that changes the direction let's just add a left go to it lovely uh, and we want the value to the up the opposite i don't want the right go on the same time as the left goes on so let's change that to zero and then the opposite way round is here and that's going to be on so let's just check that that's not broken anything in the code so the code's still working let's just try changing the state okay so that goes off and that goes on i think i might change this this state so let's say uh traffic can, let's change this to traffic can move can move from left and we'll change this to traffic can move from right. And hopefully I've got that the right way. No, that's got to be right. And that's got to be left. So let's stop that again. Make sure that the code's not broken. So it still connects. And let's go back. Should turn the light off. Traffic can move from left, uh, which is that way. And traffic can move from right that way. Lovely. So all I've got to do is wire up this the opposite way round. So let's take, let's get the green light working first. So let's set it to the other state. I'm just going to do this while this is turned on. So I need to take it from that pin there. So that needs to go to the green light. It's getting a bit messy now. Hope we can still see it. Yeah, so that needs to go from the green light there. And then let's take a... Um, the negative back and hopefully if I put this in here now this should light up green lovely all right so we'll test that again so one way green going that way traffic can move from right and traffic can move from left of course the red light to stop the traffic this way isn't working so the final thing is let's take a the negative across um, with another resistor and apply that to the stop led on the right direction lovely so that should be that should be working and then i've just got to take the signal so i take the signal off the green led the green left led and pop it onto there which hopefully uh, if i've done it on the right bit there we go so there so now the traffic's moving that way and we've got a stop sign on that that side and if i change that the other way around then the lights go the other way around so i hope you found that interesting there's just a bit of wiring and a bit of shared um, leds on here to make this look more complicated than it actually is of course the next thing to do if you're on uk lights i don't know whether this is elsewhere uh, in the world whether it works the same way is that we have an amber light in the middle of it which works on a different sequence so how would you go about doing that so that you had an amber light when it was about to stop and when you were about to go so that's an extra bit but i hope you enjoyed that and messing about with some wi-fi on the pico w bye Once it's hot in the cave, 27 degrees. <gasps>